Yeah, we're at the 17th National Remote Indigenous Media Festival. Uh, we have an awesome week. Um, just for the people watching Gilmore, could you just tell me your name, uh, a little bit about where you come from and who you work for? Okay, uh, well, my name is Gilmore Johnson. I'm from far north Queensland, uh, Cairns, uh, my traditional area of um, where I come from is from the rainforest region, so from Wulgarukaba around the Townsville area to the Girame, Girigan Nation and Tully, through Kunganji, into Yaraba and Western Yalanji. That's on my father's side, on my mother's side I come from uh, Torres Strait, my grandparents come from uh, Darnley Island in the east and, and Boigo Island uh, in the northern top west region. I'm a network coordinator with uh, Black Star Radio Network, which is a radio program under Queensland Remote Aboriginal Media. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a uh, director on the uh, IRCA board. Right, yes. cool. And what are some of the issues in your community? Oh, a lot of issues in the community. <laughs> and uh, I, I consider my, my community uh, to be around North Queensland uh, area and throughout the Torres Strait. So uh, it's quite remote. So uh, in, a, in an area where uh, geographically where we're a long way from major centre and towns, Cairns is, a, is the northernmost uh, uh, town in uh, big centre of town in Queensland. So a lot of the communities around the Cape and the Torres Strait do access Cairns for... Um, hospital, medical services, education, mm. uh, and also um, family connections are run right through that way. So a lot of issues, geographically I'd say, I'm traveling through there. Cost of living uh, is a big uh, issue where, um, where we come from up in the north there. And um, also um, basic uh, telecommunications uh, infrastructure. A lot has uh, improved over the years, but just a basic means of communication where you're allowed to make a phone call, you can get on the internet, or you've got access to um, good electricity as well too because of power. A lot of uh, communities are under um, diesel power, so um, power does uh, tend to cut out uh, for um, a long period of time. And also we're um, pretty much prone to a um, lot of natural disasters like cyclones and storms which can cut off communities uh, for weeks at a time too. So we, we tend to um, um, get isolated and, and uh, that's a, a lot of issues that can relate to that just for being uh, geographically isolated from many major towns or cities. Sure. So, I mean, you know, communications, phone, internet, radio, these are all ways of uh, building community and for people to be able to connect with one another within their geographical region. If those sorts of things get cut off or if there's, there isn't access, like, what, what's the result of that? What does that actually look like? Oh, well, it, it does. Uh, we've come so reliant on technology uh, these days, so um, the anxiety around it um, when the phone's cut off or there's no signal, you sort of um, tend to think, oh, well, wonder what it was like thousands of years ago when our people uh, roamed this yeah, country. Right. They didn't have anything, you know, how and, did they, survive? Uh, and they survived. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure if they could do it, we can, we can go without it. So, I mean, it does, um, technology, we become really reliable on that, and that's good in your basic telephone and messaging and uh, internet services. A lot of businesses and um, organizations to run a business, technology and communications is the most important part of being having your organization successful or your business successful. But communication is a, a very powerful, uh, powerful tool, um, but it also has its um, advantages and disadvantages uh, as well too. Sure. Oh well, the advantages is that um, you know you you could ring family members and communicate with family members in an instant. You know you can make a phone call, you could send a text message. Uh, um, social networking has come come a part of um, you know our communication fabric these days, where we w a lot of people may not have a phone or that, but they may have a have a social networking profile. So uh, um, so those are some of the advantages that we can be able to communicate and in, in media what we do we we feel very confident that uh, there's a lot of technology that's available uh, out there around the world that could be used in, in our uh, communities for those areas that are geographically um, isolated. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. um, so for those I guess you know in Cairns it's probably not 
as much of an issue. But in those areas that are incredibly remote and incredibly isolated, um, what could be done by government, what could be done by the telcos to make it make access easier or make it better for those sorts of people? Yeah, well, we, um, we originally had uh, sort of one company in, in the remote areas, uh, one telco company. Uh, now there's uh, some parts, you've got two telco companies. So um, it's all about con con uh, competition. Um, that happens in the city. You've got three or four different types or probably even more different types of telcos or internet providers. Um, a lot of our communities are limited uh, in terms of that. So. Um, the government has a big responsibility. Of course, the um, national broadband network is a, is a massive infrastructure and it's, um, it's one of those keystone things that's going to improve the livelihoods of all Australians. And we're also going to improve our way of communicating with the global world as well. So it's, um, it's everybody's responsibility and I think um, I think technology has become part of a, of a human right now that uh, people do have access to, to technology and whether it's a means of um, living in a remote area. I have a lot of family that live throughout Cape York and the Torres Strait, so um, communicating with them uh, has proven difficult at times when there's power off. They can't charge their um, batteries unless they've got generators uh, where they can get their powers going. Um, for an instance, we've got radio networks, radio stations in each of the communities um, in throughout Cape York. Power does go off, radio services go down, so um, it does certainly affect um, the livelihoods of people, whether they need it for um, information, but also for entertainment as well too. They can listen to their radio, whether it's on the background at work or at their um, offices, uh, whether it's pure entertainment like sitting down on a Wednesday night and listening to the Mary G show and being a part of a, of a wide community around the country mm. so, um, and a big yarning circle that way. So um, technology has improved and has, has made our jobs easier and it's made us to think about the creative side and it does help that way. We can, um, I remember coming into radio, we, um, I was having, we had CDs and mini discs and um, um, we were even editing on, on mini-disc and doing interviews that way and um, people before me would talk about um, ro uh, reel to reel and uh, c uh, cutting and slicing up um, um, interviews and I, I can't consider myself walking around with a 20 kilogram recorder and coming back and cutting up all tapes and that stuff so um, you know technology has improved the lives and it's, it's improving the lives of a disadvantaged uh, people as well too so I think government can really have a look at some of those more in infrastructure in some of those remote areas because where in Australia for example a lot of um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people we live in remote areas reason why we live in remote areas because our people have been living in these parts of the country for thousands of years. Australia, the Aboriginal culture in Australia is so important for the survival of our people but also the identity of our country. It's not just our culture, Aboriginal culture, it's the Australian culture and I believe that um, through communication we can educate and we can entertain and uh, we can provide a really good form of communications that we are Australians, this is our culture and we share that and be proud of that wherever we, we go around this country or when we go overseas that we have a, a strong people that have been doing business for thousands of years and we've had people that have been here for the past couple of hundreds of years have contributed uh, and respected uh, this country's uh, identity as uh, Aboriginal people being first people in this country. Yeah. Thanks yep. very much. Okay. Gilmore Johnson from Black Star Radio.